was correct with the sign. I had a sign error on the translation like Russian. But if I, and I discovered a sign error in our book, but due to your advice and due to very careful people, I was correct here. And it's good so. Okay, um, I wanted to uh, bring, um, but I, I think I skipped that. Uh, section 5.7, gauge field theories of okay. abelian and non-abelian groups compared. It's given in our book a table where we compare different pieces, but I'm um, more interested getting now the most general quadratic Lagrangian done, and I want to show you how this Lagrangian, uh, which was proposed by Petra, uh, Nestor, and myself uh, two years ago, uh, how we come to this Lagrangian and uh, uh, what the arguments are in favor of such a Lagrangian. So, um, so skipping 5.7, which was uh, supposed, and you can just read the paper in our book, a comparison, um, comparison between Young Mills and Voltaire uh, theory. Uh, I, start with section 5.8, <coughs> quadratic master Lagrangian, I call it master Lagrangian, because I think it's the final Lagrangian in this quadratic theory, <coughs> quadratic master Lagrangian. Um, is parity even? Is parity even? This was long known, and parity odd, this is from the recent parity odd, and we think we need the parity odd for coupling to uh, antimatter parity odd pieces. <coughs> well, in, uh, in fact, it, it happened like that when I uh, came uh, 2009 to Chung Li, uh, to uh, uh, Jim Nestor and his group. Uh, I was not doing Poincare cage theory for at least 10 years. But they proposed a, a, a model for an accelerating universe which had a, a quadratic Lagrangian and it had very nice properties. And we immediately uh, tried to generalize this model and, and we found that all the Lagrangians which we had discussed so far had only parity even pieces, but from, a point, from the point of view of um, fermionic matter, uh, you need also to have the parity odd pieces. Uh, in between, there were papers by Diakonov and collaborators who started uh, from Diakonov yeah, from some uh, primordial, this was also 2011, some primordial spinor and probably to gravity and they developed uh, a Lagrangian and this Lagrangian had also a, a, a parity odd pieces and we wanted and we found out that this Lagrangian, the quadratic piece, looks exactly the same as we had already discussed with Kepler uh, and Nestor. So we, we compared it and then we uh, finally uh, 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 present this Lagrangian. Now what we, uh, uh, as I told you, we, we just want to simulate um, um, young mills and young mills. Uh, they have a very simple life comparatively because they only had one term. But we already had uh, gotten the einstein kartan term, if I write it down, this cosmological constant 1 over 2 kappa uh, times eta alpha beta which r alpha beta uh, minus 2, that we call the cosmological constant lambda 0 times eta, because in Gaussian theories the lambda 0 gets renormalized in a way uh, picks up torsion square pieces. So we have a naked cosmological function if you like. And then uh, uh, we generalize it to what we call weak gravity, the Lagrangian for weak gravity. V 
peak is always referring to Einstein Newton with a plus, so parity even, which we already discussed. This is one over two kappa bracket a zero a minus a zero times r alpha beta which beta alpha beta minus two <coughs> lambda zero times eta the black motion which I just had but uh, the same coupling constant and for dimensional reasons I can add the torsion square pieces, which are the even pieces, T alpha, which we already learned, which the sum from 1 to 3 over uh, A i, capital I, times the ith piece of the torsion. Um, no, uh, sorry, the Hodge-Stuhl of the ith piece of the torsion T alpha. This is, uh, and you had this in the teleparallelism theory, you had these AIs where the values which I gave uh, in the first part of the lecture uh, in order to recover Einstein's theory. So we have here uh, three constants, A1, A2, A3, and here we have a A0, which we uh, use for convenience, which for Einstein Kartner is the uh, minus one. Now, already in 1980, already uh, um, Heutschmann et al. Uh, discussed parity odd pieces, and, and also in 1980 it was Nelson. Mm. They added uh, the curvature pseudo scale. So that is R3 alpha beta. So they, uh, if we substitute also um, the torsion square pieces, we have V, the weak gravity, which is either linear in curvature or quadratic in torsion, but now the odd pieces. The odd piece we already discussed, the one. Uh, we have now, uh, we take a coupling constant, which which is also the gravitational constant, and the odd piece is we, the first piece we had already, but we couldn't use as an einstein cartan minus B0 over 2 kappa times uh, this pseudo scalar, R3 alpha beta, which theta alpha, which theta beta. This is the piece which we wouldn't use for einstein cartan because it's parity odd, but there's an additional piece with an unknown constant, B0, where B0 is conventionally called, or by some people, uh, 1 over B0, is called uh, the parpero imerici parameter. Parpero <coughs> imerici. And, but we can also have torsion square pieces and now this rule uh, which I uh, explained to you is no longer valid uh, for the gravity, uh, gravity uh, for the even pieces we always had T1 times star T1 plus T2 times star T2 this is no longer valid and one has to what we use is you can use computer algebra or you can do it by hand you have additional pieces one over Two kappa is unknown coefficients. Sigma one is one point 
times T1 alpha, which T1 alpha. So here this is the piece T1, but in the case uh, of this sigma plus sigma 2, and here it turns out to be T2, no, the 2 comes in front of the T. T alpha, which I think three. Yes, which three. This is a, a matter of computation. You cannot know this. You have to compute it. What you have to do is just to uh, to um, you have T alpha, which T alpha, and you. And you expand the first piece in these three irreducible pieces and this, and then you multiply, and you have to look which pieces don't vanish, and the only non-vanishing pieces is T1, which T1, and T2, which T3. And we uh, uh, bring them in by these coefficients. So for B gravity of the uh, Newton-Einstein type, these are the only gravity uh, even pieces, so the whole Lagrangian would consist of the sum of these uh, two. So, uh, but now there is uh, a special thing which we uh, know from, also from Youngville's theory. <coughs> you have so-called boundary terms. Boundary terms. <coughs> That is terms which you can, quadratic pieces which you can put under um, 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 exterior derivative. So what we have here is the Chern Simons, Chern Simons type, because Chern Simons refers to curvature, but we uh, talk here about torsion, so I say type three form, which is fairly well known. Uh, it is just uh, C, T, T minus, minus is for negative parity, for odd parity is one half of theta alpha, which T alpha. So you find that the boundary term P, T, T, Minus is the exterior derivative of this term, which yeah, can easily verify using the first Bianchi identity minus C T T is equal one half of T <coughs> alpha, which T alpha plus R alpha beta, which theta alpha, which theta beta. This is really uh, the R3, the totally anti-symmetric piece, so you can rewrite this as one half over T alpha, which T alpha <coughs> minus Hodge-Dual of X, the X is this pseudo-scale, which we defined before. And this you can decompose, of course, in, again, in three pieces, it's one half, of T1 alpha which um, 1 T alpha plus 2 um, 2 T alpha which 3 T alpha plus and now the X term is the R3 R3 alpha beta, which theta alpha, which theta beta, parentheses. So you see that uh, this linear combination of the torsion square pieces and this uh, curvature uh, piece give a boundary term. 
So if you connect in the Lagrangian those terms, they give a boundary term and don't contribute to the, um, to the um, uh, field equation. So uh, you can diminish the number of independent components by taking care of this uh, Lagrangian, uh, of this uh, boundary term. So the whole um, weak gravitational Lagrangian, the weak part, <coughs> is equal, and now the weak part depends on, on constants. Now we collect them all, A0, that was the part which is employed of the E0, that is the part here in Ritzi parameter, A1, A2, A3, these are uh, the three torsion square pieces and sigma, the even, even part, and sigma one and sigma two, the torsion square pieces which are odd. And uh, we can add with a, uh, with a, with a scalar function, uh, with a scalar constant F1, uh, the boundary term. So all together we have. V plus plus V minus plus F1 times this boundary term And by a suitable choice of the F1, which we will do later, we can uh, um, cancel some constants. Okay, uh, and now we have uh, strong gravity. Now the weak gravity is just the einstein pattern gravity plus torsion square. We have, uh, and, uh, and for the, uh, the parity even pieces, which are these pieces which we always had in the Lagrangians uh, already starting in the 80s of the last century, uh, we had this Lagrangian and then uh, these pieces uh, are sort of newly introduced successively by these people, Hoechmann et al., and then by others. Uh, we have the parity violating pieces, which is this characteristic piece, which we call X, and then this torsion square. But this is one of the mistakes which in the literature is often done. They add uh, P0 the uh, Barbero Imerizzi piece, but because this piece, uh, because of this boundary term, this piece is related to torsion squares. So you only have to use this identity in order to see that if you add this Lagrangian to, uh, to your einstein pattern Lagrangian, say, then you get effectively torsion square pieces. And of course, then there is no reason to exclude the other torsion square pieces. So only to add this piece and uh, no torsion square pieces this is uh, really not uh, very much in the sense of, of a gauge theory if you take care of this uh, um, um, uh, boundary term, which it, it, I should have mentioned this term. Um, this uh, term was introduced by Nie and Jan already quite some time ago. Nie and Jan is, Nie is at the Tsinghua University in Beijing, the institute where Jan is. And, and this was one of his students, I guess, in Stony Brook. And they introduced it this in 1982. So this we call this the Nie-Yan identity, this identity which relates this boundary term. So if you forget, if you introduce this Barbero uh, Imrizi term, you should not forget the Nyeyan identity, which leads you then to torsion squares automatically. Okay, so this is basically the gravitational constant, and this exhausts, uh, exhausts what we learned from Newton from Einstein. 
you can we, we learned that we can have Einstein theory back from this piece, but taking teleparallelism, we can also have it back from this piece if we choose cleverly the I, uh, the AIs. So uh, Einstein is contained here in some sense, and it's contained here in some sense. So it's uh, it's sort of. Uh, um, in different limits, and uh, so it's not so easy to say this is Einstein's term and this not. Um, in fact, Einstein can be reformulated as translational gauge theory, and then it's this term, and you put the curvature to zero, and uh, the, the riemann kaplan curvature to zero, and this, and this yields then Einstein if you uh, uh, pick uh, uh, this uh, torsion square. So if you like, we can say this is the Einstein uh, sort of content of the gauge theory of gravity. Here there are now gravity violating pieces. Since we don't know how gravity couples to antimatter, I mean, they are just now starting again experiments, as you know. Uh, we better keep these terms, which are perfectly allowed and perfectly normally behaved. I mean, these are torsion square, and these are like the einstein kaplan term, just a different parity. So we, we should take this. Uh, so um, including um, um, the, uh, the, uh, the parity or terms, you can say that this weak um, uh, Lagrangian uh, encompasses in different um, ways Einstein's theory. But it's more general, but it, it encompasses Einstein's theory in a certain way. So. Uh, also in the sense that you only need one coupling constant, a kappa. This is the coupling constant which has one over length square. All these constants are dimensionless and are assumed to be of order unity. So they are sort of secondary coupling constants uh, which, which, which we have to uh, take care of. And then, and now something new comes. And this is really what we call strong gravity. I mean, this world was used a different connection already in gravity. <coughs> Strong gravity, and this is really what is new and which is hypothetical, of course. With six are alpha beta pieces, because we have six irreducible uh, uh, components. So we postulate that we have a V strong gravity. Now, of course, first the parity conserving pieces. The coupling constant is uh, like in strong interaction. It's dimensionless. 2 over rho. Rho is a dimensionless coupling constant of strong gravity, which can have any value. We don't know. This is a hypothesis. And we, we get just uh, the six pieces of the irreducible decomposition. R alpha beta is always, uh, as I said already, the diagonal, the diagonal pieces which sum from i equals 1 to 6 from wi, these are the constants, watch dual of the piece w, uh, piece i of r alpha beta. These are the strong pieces even parity, and now I can write down immediately um, the V W strong with hot parity. There are a few more. These are six pieces, but the odd are only four, which and the constants I call, so it's minus one over two rho. And this is again what I, the same story as with the torsion. I have to compute. Really, it was heavy computer algebra, which mainly uh, our colleague Baker uh, applied, reduced with x uh, to compute which pieces really contribute. And we get mu1 times 1 of r alpha beta, which 1 r alpha beta plus mu q uh, piece uh, number two. 
times P is number 4, R alpha beta rich number 4, R alpha beta. So 1, 1, 2, 4. And now I get uh, two more pieces, which I also write here is minus mu 3. And here we get 3 times 6, the piece 3 of R alpha beta, which the piece 6 of R alpha beta, and we get the piece 5, 5. Plus mu 4, the fourth coupling constant, times 5 R alpha beta, which you may be tired of all these pieces, but I mean, this is just parentheses like irreducible decompositions work. Sometimes they have to write down quite a bit. And this is the, the total Lagrangian, but now I have to, uh, to find the same thing, which is now really also known from gauge theory. From, I have to, uh, to discuss the boundary terms. Now I have six W's and I have four mu's. And this is a new type of gravity which is of Young Mills type and which is Lukava type if, if it's massive because it's F, F square after all. And uh, now I have to consider two four forms which uh, yield Pontriagin. Um, Pontriagin. Form. I will make this now uh, very short. Uh, it's B R R, so it's a boundary term for the R R minus. It's it's parity violating, so it's minus B of C R R parity violating, and this is.